Would you like to buy real estate in 2023 using none or very little of your own money? My name is Brandon Turner. I've invested in real estate now for like 15 years now. I even wrote a book called The Book on Investing in Real Estate with No and Low Money Down and a bunch of other books. I actively invest in real estate today. I've got almost 10,000 rental units. I use very, very, very little of my own money to build that entire portfolio. And I wanna lay out for you my top 10 favorite no and low money down strategies for buying real estate in 2023. Does that sound good? I want you to do me a favor, grab a piece of paper, take some notes, and yeah, let me know if you have questions in the comment section below. But first, a little bit of understanding about no and low money down real estate investing. If you want to invest in real estate, you can do it without money. So first, understanding that the money comes from somewhere. That's what I'm gonna be explaining where that money can come from. If you want to engage in no and low money down, you do need to have skill. Really, there's like three things involved with no money down or with real estate in general. You either have, you have skill, you have money, and you have the, what I call the hustle or the actions, the work, right? You can know how to do something, you can do the work, and you can have the money. Those are the three things needed. If you want to do without the money, then you need to have the skill and the action, those two things. So the fact that you're watching this video right now tells me that you're willing to learn. Keep learning, keep growing. That's going to help you a ton. So build a skill set until you're incredibly smart when it comes to real estate investment investing specifically your niche of real estate. Like what exactly are you going to focus on? The better you get at that, the easier it will be to do no and low money down strategies. The list I'm going to give you is my top 10 list that works in 2023. But the truth is all of them work. Here's how I want you to think about this. Creative finance, which is what we call no and low money down strategies, is really like a bunch of tools inside of a toolbox. I mean, think about this. If you had a toolbox and you only had one tool, you had a hammer, there's very few projects you could take on around your house. You could maybe pound a nail on the wall. You could pull a nail out. You could hit a robber over the head when he comes into your house. That's about it. If you had a hammer and a saw and a screwdriver, well, now you could build a swing set for your kids. Now, if you had a jackhammer in there and you had a tape measure, now you can build a house. The more tools in your toolbox, the more projects you can take on. The same is true for real estate. Your mental toolbox, what's up here? The more of these 10 that I'm gonna give you in a second that you understand, how they work and how to use them, the better you'll be able to fit the right strategy for the right property, the right situation. All of these could work in different situations. You need to learn them all so you know where to fit them in. Now you can get really good at one of them and focus that way. Having a basic understanding of all of them is gonna be super helpful. Here we go, my top 10 no and low money down strategies for 2023 real estate investing. I'm gonna start with number 10 because it's not technically real estate investing, but but it can be done with no and low money down. And that is this idea of wholesaling. You've heard of wholesaling before most likely, but if not, here's the gist. I am a wholesaler, let's say. I go out and find properties that are usually like nasty or they're something wrong with them. There's a person getting into divorce and they just need to sell quickly. Whatever the problem is, I'm going to go as a wholesaler and find that property. And I'm going to talk with the seller for now. Just understand you got to find those properties and then you're going to negotiate and you're going to put the property under contract. When I say that, I mean, you're going to sign an agreement that says I, the wholesaler, and then this is the key and, or someone I assign it to or, and, or assigns. That's the, that's the legal phrase there will buy your property for whatever, $500,000. Because now you have a contract. You have a legal contract signed by both people that says you will, you or someone that you pick will buy that property for $500,000. Now you go and find a, usually a house flipper or a landlord and you say, hey, I found this really great deal. It's worth like $600,000, but I can give it to you for 520. And they're like, 520 is a great deal. So now they buy it for 520. What are you going to buy it for? 500. Except for the, the reason I say it's not technically real estate investing, because a wholesaler generally doesn't actually own the property. They simply sell the contract. They assign the contract and they make a $20,000 fee for doing that. They're basically buying for 500, selling for 520. They make $20,000. It didn't take any money other than maybe some marketing costs. If you were like sending out letters, that is a legit way to make money from nothing by putting together a buyer and a seller. Now disclaimer, wholesaling is considered illegal in some areas, like some States, Ohio is one of them in the areas of Ohio and Florida. They've in some areas they've said, Hey, you cannot wholesale. That is illegal. So make sure you understand the laws, understand how to do wholesaling, even in those 
states. There's ways to do it and there's ways not to do it. The legal issue there is, are you practicing real estate without a real estate license? And if you are practicing real estate without a real estate license in an area that doesn't like that, which most areas don't like that, you've got a problem. So how do you do it legally? Well, that's the question. You can get your real estate license. There's ways to do it that way. Or you can do what's called a double closing, which is where you actually buy the property and then the same day sell it. And there are actually transactional funding companies that will fund it the $500,000 for like an hour. And then you sell for 520. Now you're going to pay a few thousand bucks for that. Okay, fine. You made $15,000 instead of 20. Now, why do I call that real estate investing? If you're not buying rentals, well, because you just made $20,000 through real estate, through the investment of your time and effort. And now that 20,000 can be used and dumped into either more marketing for more deals, or you can dump it into buying your own investment properties. So a lot of investors actually got started by wholesaling. They learn how to find deals and how to negotiate and how to analyze and how to do all the hard stuff by being a wholesaler. And then they move into the actual world of flipping or rental property. So that is number 10. Moving to number nine is called a lease option. A lease option is where, again, it's not even technically investing because you don't own the property, but let me explain. A lease option, or maybe a term you've heard, rent to own, is where you rent somebody's property and then re-rent it out to a tenant. If you do a rent to own with the tenant, that's called a lease option sandwich. Now, what's the beauty of this? Well, let me explain. Let's say you go out there and you find a property that you want to buy, that you would love to get some cash flow from a tenant, but you don't have any money, but you find a duplex and that duplex, the owner, they want, let's call it $200,000. You don't have any money to buy that property for $200,000. So instead you agree to rent to own or a lease option. You sign a lease on the duplex, the whole thing for let's call it a thousand dollars a month. And then you have an option, which is a legal document. It's two separate documents, lease option. You have an option to buy the property at $200,000 anytime in the next, call it three years, four years, five years, two years, whatever you define. I have a lease that I'm now paying a thousand dollars a month and I have an option to buy it later if I'm able to. So the beauty of this now is you have basically no money and now yes, you have to pay a thousand dollars a month, but you're going to rent that property out for let's call it $2,000 a month. So you're bringing in 2000 and you're paying out a thousand plus some other expenses. You're not going to purely profit all of that, but that is a way to get real cash flow for almost no money out of pocket whatsoever. It's a really neat strategy. And then let's say down the road, you got some money. Well, now you have a legal option, which is you have a right to buy the property. They have to sell it to you. If you have an option, you don't have to buy it though. It's an option, but they have the requirement to sell it to you at that point. So you can lock in that price at 200, even four years later, if you still have that option going and the property's worth 300, you can still buy it for 200. That's why options are super interesting. So lease options, very neat. Next one, number eight, a uh, home equity lines of credit. Over the past few years, real estate has gone through the roof. You know that, right? Like you buy a property for $200,000, five years ago, it's probably worth $300,000 today. The difference between what you owe on a property and what that property is worth. So if you owe 200, it is worth 300. That difference is called equity. That's your wealth. That's your net worth. That's equity. Well, there are programs, there are loan programs offered by almost every bank and credit union called home equity lines of credit. And you can do it on your primary residence. There's also ways to do it on rental property. So if you have equity in your property, you can then borrow money against that equity. In other words, they would put a lien, like a second mortgage on the property that says, if you don't pay it back, they can take your property. But now you can borrow that hundred thousand dollars or a good portion of it to do whatever you want with it, to go buy real estate. In fact, I bought a triplex one time and I didn't have the money for it. I found some partners that wanted to invest with me. They didn't have the money either, but what they had was a line of credit. A line of credit allowed them then to borrow the 30 or $40,000 we needed. And then we bought the property. HELOCs can be a, a super good way. If you have equity, if you have property already, you can tap into it, use that, and then buy real estate with that. The reason it's not, you know, a number one, two, three on my list today is because in interest rates are really high right now. So you might for a HELOC where three years ago, two years ago, you might've been paying one or two, 3% for a HELOC. Today, you might be paying seven, eight, 10% for a HELOC. So it can still work, especially on a short-term basis. Who cares if you're, you know, if you're going to buy a property, fix it up and then sell it again, who cares if you're paying 8% on a HELOC, you know, it's only for a short time. Or if you're going to refinance it, who cares if it's a short time, I wouldn't want an 8% loan for the next 30 years, but as long as it's a short-term option, it can be great.
create what we call gap funding. All right, that was number eight. Number seven, hard money. Hard money is a lender who lends on the hard asset, not on your personal income or credit score necessarily. Now they might still look at your income and credit score, but they are lending on the hard asset. Hard money is not hard money because it's hard to get. It's because it's on a hard asset. So there are literally thousands of companies out there that are hard money lenders. And what they do is they will look at the property and they will lend you a certain amount based on how valuable that property is and then what, how much you're asking for. Typically in the call it 50 to 60% range. So if you find a property that could be worth $100,000, I'm gonna use simple math here, $100,000, but the owner of the property is willing to take $50,000 for it because it needs a lot of work, the hard money lender might give you 50 or even 60 or even 70 potentially, maybe even 80 or 90 depending. So the better deal you can get, the more likely you can get a no money down. Now, no money is difficult with hard money loans. I'll admit that fully, but it is possible. It's also more possible the better deal you have and the more experience you have. All right, that was hard money number seven. Well, how do you find hard money lenders? Go to biggerpockets.com slash hard money lenders. You can also go to a local real estate club, talk to other house flippers, talk to wholesalers. They're not hard to find. You could Google them, you can find them. They're all over the place. Get to know some hard money lenders in your area, find out what they require from you, and then build relationship and get some hard money. Number six, it's a more popular strategy lately. It's called sub two or subject two. Subject two has been around forever, but just lately it's been working better. And there's been some uh, influencers like Pace Morby who have been talking a lot about this. Subject two is where you find a property that let's say you want to buy one, two, three main street and the owner, his name is John and John owes $200,000 on the property. And maybe the property is worth only $200,000. Well, you can buy John's property subject to the existing loan. What that means is you're going to buy the property, but you're going to keep the loan in place. You're not going to pay off the loan. So the title transfers to you, but the property, the lien is still on the property. The lien is still on the former owner, even though you're the new owner. Now you might be wondering, wait a second, you can't buy a property without paying off the lender. You can. Now the question is, what's the bank going to do about it? And this is why I like sub two, but you have to be careful with sub two. If you buy a property and don't pay the loan off, there is something called a due on sale clause. A due on sale clause is part of the original mortgage. And it says, Hey, if you sell the property, we have the right to call the loan due. It doesn't mean they're going to. And in reality, they generally have not 99% of the time in the past, the banks have not called the loan due. There's ways to hide it or at least not let the bank know. This is why sub two has never been one of my favorite ways to do it because I don't like that risk. What I've learned from guys like Pace Morby is that there are ways to drastically reduce the risk. And the thing is, it's not a necessarily an ethical consideration. It's a contractual situation. So how do you make sure the contract is still fulfilled and that they're not going to call the note due and you're not doing anything illegal. You're not doing anything wrong necessarily. You just want to make sure you're reducing your risk. So sub two can be a super unique way to buy real estate today using very little, if no money of your own, you just got to have a plan at some point of what to do. If the bank does want their money back, can you refinance? Can you do something? So sub two, super interesting. Before you go into a sub two deal though, please go and read a book on it. Pace just wrote one wealth without cash. It's called, you can find it on Amazon, learn how to do it right. And then go do it. Number five, private money. So private money is when somebody, an individual will fund your real estate deal and they just want a fixed return. For example, you could go to your mailman who happens to have a few hundred thousand dollars in his savings account. And you're like, Hey, can you just lend me that money at 8% and I'm going to go buy these rental properties. And he's like, well, I'm only earning 0% in the bank right now. Sure. I guess I'll lend that to you. Now private money is amazing. In fact, it would be like number one, if it were easy to get, it's not always easy to get private money because not a lot of people just have money sitting around that they just want to go get a fixed return on, especially in 2023, when they can get 5% on their money in a checking account, they're going to be less likely to want to get eight or 9% from you a more risky play when a checking account is going to be guaranteed 5%. And so private money still does exist. It still is doable. In fact, I was just talking to a friend yesterday who's getting hundreds of thousands of dollars in private money from several different lenders. It still works. It just, harder to find. But if you can find it, if you can get bill relationships with people who have money, especially former real estate investors are oftentimes good ones to talk to about private money because they may be at a phase of their career where they, they still like real estate. They understand real estate, but they don't necessarily want to be involved in the day to day. They might be willing to just lend you the money and have a fixed return for their retirement. Number four, seller financing. Now, if you roughly, and this might not be true anymore, 
But like, I don't know, when I wrote the book, No One Low Money Down, you know, the book on investing in real estate with No One Low Money Down, I did some research and found out that like 30% of all houses in America were owned free and clear. In other words, there was no mortgage on them. And I'm sure that's probably a, a lower number today, but there are still plenty of houses out there today and properties that do not have loans. Maybe they're a Dave Ramsey fan, so they just never got a loan on it. Maybe they paid it off. They're an older landlord that paid it off over 30 years. Maybe they, there's some other reason, but they have no mortgage on it. In that case, you can buy the property using what's called seller financing, which is the seller of the property. They transfer title to you. You now own the property legally, but you actually now have a loan with the seller. The seller is essentially saying, yes, you owe me $200,000, but I will take that over 30 years or 15 years, whatever you decide. It's kind of like if you were to sell your truck, let's say you wanted to sell your pickup truck to your brother-in-law, but your brother-in-law don't have no money and you want $10,000 for your pickup truck. So you say, Hey, brother-in-law, how about instead, why don't I, I'll sell the truck to you and you're just going to make payments to me of $300 a month for the next three years. And they're like, great. And you're like, great. And they still, it's their truck now. They own the truck, but you put a lien on the truck. If they didn't pay, you could take the truck back. That's exactly what seller financing is. You put a lien on the property, like the more, they put a lien on your house that says if you don't pay them back, they're going to take the house back for themselves. I love seller financing. Now, again, not super easy to find, but if you were out there looking, you can deliberately look for people who have no mortgages, that's public data. And you went to them and said, Hey, you want to sell your property? You know, what's it worth? $200,000. You owe nothing on it. Okay. If you sold that today, that $200,000, you got to pay taxes, including the what's called recapture of depreciation. There's a lot of taxes to pay. If you were to sell that property for 200, you're probably going to walk with like 140. Then what are you going to do with that money? And they're like, Oh, I guess I'm going to put it in the stock market. Oh, you want to put it in the stock market in this crazy market right now? What are you going to get in there? 2% maybe three, four, five. I don't know. What are you going to get? It's risky. People get, especially real estate investors who have owned property for a long time. They're not usually stock people. What are they going to do with that money? They're going to live on it and then it's going to be gone someday. So this is a great opportunity for that person to turn their money into a seller financing. You can pay them for the next 30 years. So imagine they're a 60 year old investor has their property paid off. You can now put a 30 year mortgage on it. You own the property. You pay the same amount for 30 years. The owner gets the same amount for the next 30 years. Amazing way for them to go into retirement with an asset they understand because they once owned it. Seller financing is incredible and it still works. And it's a phenomenal way to invest in real estate in 2023. But you know what I like a lot and one that I do more than anything else on this list is number three. The reason I didn't put it as number one is because most of you are not going to do this strategy. Number three is real estate syndication. Real estate syndication is where you raise money from a bunch of investors. They all pool their money together and then you go buy big properties together. So for example, I own over $900 million worth of real estate. I invest in every deal that I do. It's through my company, Open Door Capital. If you wanna check out what we do, it's odcfund.com. I personally invest in every single deal, but a percentage based, I probably have invested less than 1% total of all of that $900 million of real estate. Like it's, it's so low compared to that. And you don't have to do 900 million. You can buy a million dollar apartment complex and you're going to need probably $400,000 down. So you could go to four buddies, have each of them put in a hundred thousand dollars. And then you, you don't put in anything and you then split the profits. Typically like what we do is like what's called a 70, 30 split. So I get 30%. My investors who put in the money get 70%. Now, sometimes it's 80, 20. Sometimes I've heard 90, 10. It depends on how good of a deal you got and what you can negotiate for. Now, the beauty of this, of course, is that you get 30, you know, between 20 and 30% of all the upside and the cash flow. Now we do put something in there called a uh, preferred return. So my 30% doesn't even start until my investors get seven or 8%. Yeah, you know, it depends on the deal, six, seven or 8%. Guaranteed is the wrong word, but they are guaranteed to get their 7% before I get anything. And they're not guaranteed to get a 7%, but they're guaranteed to get it before I get anything, or at least in terms of like, I might make nothing if I don't do a good job. So it's a really cool win-win way to really scale rapidly. I mean, four years ago, I had $2 million of real estate and today I have $900 million of real estate. That came through syndication. Now, to be good at syndication, you have to be really, really good at building a team because it takes a number of people to be able to run a large commercial operation like this. You have to be really good at raising capital. You have to be understand real estate. I would not start 
with syndication ever. I think it's too complex to start. But if you are somebody who's been investing for a while, you can start small. In fact, my very first syndication was only two money partners. It was me and two other people. They put in their money, but I ran it like I was running a million or a billion dollar syndication because I wanted to make sure I was learning along the way. And that deal ended up being really good. We ended up getting a phenomenal return for investors. Then we did another deal and another and another. And that's how I got up to where I'm at today. So syndication, very powerful. If you want to learn more about that, I wrote a book alongside my partner in Open Door Capital. His name is Brian Murray. We wrote actually two books together called The Multifamily Millionaire, Volume 1 and 2. You can get those in Amazon. A volume 2 is a little more on the syndication side. Volume 1 is a little more on the smaller side. So two, three, five, 10, 20 unit properties. But I would recommend reading both if you want to get in the syndication. Read volume one, then volume two. All right, moving on to number two, equity partnerships. An equity partnership is simply you partner with someone else. They bring the money, the equity needed to buy the deal. You bring the deal or the work or both. And we talked about this earlier in the video, right? Where there's three things you need. You need money, you need hustle, and you need education. And education gets you the deal, right? You know how to do it. I've done this partnership thing over and over and over and over my career. I'll give you an example. One of my very first properties I wanted to buy, I mentioned earlier that triplex, I didn't have the money for it. So I went to some friends of mine and I said, hey, would you be interested in partnering on this deal? You bring the money, I'll bring the deal and I'll manage it. I'll take care of all the problems, the rehab, I'll manage the tenants, I'll do everything. And then we'll split everything 50-50. And they were like, okay. And then again, like I said earlier, they used the home equity line of credit. So they didn't even have any money into it. They used, they borrowed the money for the down payment. They ended up making ridiculous money on that deal over time and they never had to do any work. I ended up making ridiculous money on that deal and I didn't have to put a dime into that property. I just put sweat equity into it. You know, it's funny when I tell people this story or anytime I talk about equity partnerships and I say like, I split it 50-50, I get one of two responses. Some people are like, why would you give them 50%? They didn't do any work. They, you found the deal, you managed it. All they did was brought some money. Why would you give them 50%? And other people go, why would they give you 50%? You didn't put any money in. They put all the money. They could have gone and done it on their own. Isn't that funny that people have those two reactions? And that shows me that that partnership is a good partnership. You know, like they, like both of us won. They didn't want to do the work. They didn't have the ability, the knowledge, the time, the execution, the habits. They didn't have that ability to do that work, but they still wanted to invest. But what they did have was the ability to bring the money. On the other side, I didn't have the money. I couldn't do it without bringing in other money. And so of course I'm going to give away 50% because I didn't have the money. And so it worked out really, really well. And if, does it have to be 50-50? No, you can do any variation of that. But 50-50 is a nice, easy place to start when it comes to partnerships. So how do you find a good equity partner? Well, go to real estate clubs, interact online, join a tribe. You know, we've got a tribe called the Better Life Tribe. If you go to abetterlife.com, it's a tribe of over a thousand members who are all generally real estate fanatics. We all love real estate. And you engage in the conversation and you chat with people and you start learning what they want. What do they have? What do you have? And how you can work together. It's just almost all your problems can be solved by just meeting more people. So meet more people, figure out what you have, figure out what you need, and then build Build relationships until you have that. Equity partnerships are one of my all time favorite ways to invest in real estate. I recommend it all the time over almost everything else on this list. However, there is one on this list that I like even better specifically for new investors. You ready for it? Now, before I give you number one, I just say one more time. If you did not hit that little like plus sign, the thumbs up button on this video, please do so. That helps me out a lot. It helps me reach more people. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and make sure you hit that subscribe button on this YouTube channel. We are trying to grow this YouTube channel. It helps a ton when you subscribe. You can see new videos. You can even put a little bell so that you get notified when new videos come. All right, number one favorite strategy in 2023. It was also my favorite in 2022, 2021, 2020 and back for quite a while. And that is the idea of house hacking. If you haven't heard that term before, let me explain it. House hacking is a term that I coined a decade ago that basically means you buy a house or a duplex or a triplex or a fourplex. It's important to understand. It's one, two, three, or four units. I'll explain why that's important in a minute. And then you live in one of the units, or if it's a house, you live in one of the bedrooms and you rent the other ones out. And so you can actually live potentially for free because you rent it out. In fact, I, I've been house hacking since I was 21. My very first rental property, I bought a house, but then I bought a duplex after that I used as a rental. I lived in one of the units. I rented the other unit out. I still remember the day, the first day I moved my tenant in and they came and brought me $650 in cash. Now don't take money in cash. I don't do that anymore. 
They give me 600 and whatever, $50 in cash. And I remember holding that money in that alleyway going, wait, my mortgage is only $620 a month. I'm living for free right now. Woohoo! Like that was super exciting to me. Uh, and it, it led me on a journey where I've house hacked over and over and over and over. In fact, right now I live in a multi-million dollar house, probably three to $4 million value. I'm still house hacking. It's actually a three unit property. Uh, and in fact, one of the units I rent out to a, uh, to a buddy, uh, which is generally not a good idea to rent to friends, friends or family, but I'm doing it and I love it. It's working really well for me. But I rent to a, a friend and business partner. And then the downstairs unit, I could rent out anytime I wanted to, whether it's a vacation rental or I could uh, rent it out long term. But actually, I keep it empty right now because I like family and friends to come stay with me. I live in Hawaii, so I like them to come hang out sometimes. Uh, but the fact is, I'm house hacking in a multi-million dollar house. So it works at all levels. A $100,000 duplex, a $4 million house, it works. And why is it a no and low money down strategy? Because there are loan programs that if you're willing to live in the property for a short period of time, you can get very low down loans. I'll give you three examples. Number one, the most common, an FHA loan. An FHA loan is sponsored by the US government and it only requires you to bring three and a half percent down. And that three and a half percent can be gifted to you from somebody. You don't even have to have your own money necessarily for that. Somebody, somebody could gift you the three and a half percent and you could buy a property for the three and a half percent down. That means you could buy a $200,000 property for $7,000. You can save up $7,000 and buy that property. You can even make the seller of the property then pay your closing costs. There's also loans called a VA loan which is if you are a military veteran of the US military or married to one, you can get a 0% down loan from the government. And that works again for single family, duplex, triplex, fourplex. And the third thing would be a USDA loan. That is a loan that again, sponsored by the government, the US Department of Agriculture, same ones that inspect your meat and tell you that it's good meat or not. They actually have a loan program for rural properties. So you can get zero down with a USDA loan as well. And there's probably other loan programs out there for low and uh, low down. There's 5% conventional loans that you can go get as well. But the bottom Bottom line is if you're willing to live in the property for at least a year, that's generally the requirement they want you to stay for, you can get very, very low down payment. Now, when you're ready to move out, you can move right out, not a problem, and you can keep the loan there for as long as you want. Now, you can only have one FHA loan at a time, so understand you can't just go get FHA, FHA, FHA uh, over and over and over, but it does work. Hey, if you found this video helpful, share it with somebody you like, give me a like and follow and follow me on Instagram, Beardy Brandon, and follow Better Life on Instagram and TikTok and everywhere else, at Better Life. I'll see you around.